New Zealand's Hanui farm has a rich history which continues to grow year after year. Breeder of the reigning New Zealand Horse of the Year, Melody Bell, and the Southern Hemisphere, home to Lope de Vegas champion two-year-old Bellardo, and the wonderful Ifraj, who's now a grandsire of champions, the history is set to continue. Hanui Farm, well you're steeped in history, obviously three generations of the Chitty family have had Hanui. You moved here to Karaka in 2011. I was lucky enough, I was um, you know, born into the family obviously and had a passion for animals and was a, a veterinarian um, in equine practice pretty much uh, full time to 2001 and then branched out on my own, um, fundamentally doing Hanui's work. And you've had, I mean, you know, the stallions that you've had here as well over the years. You know, you've seen so many of these, these stallions we know so much of in Australia. Last Tycoon or Carnegie, um, Sea Anchor, the sire of the great Red Anchor, Tights, the damn sire of So You Think, Soviet Star, the sire of Starcraft. I mean, these are all household names in Australia and, and you know, around the world as well. Yeah, Dad, Dad was, you know, he... He was a sheep and beef cattle farm. He, he had a short horn stud and his father, my grandfather, died prematurely uh, in 1975. And um, so he was an avid breeder and he was one of the first people outside Waikato stud in the early days of Bunker Hut to really jump onto the, the shuttle stallions. Mm -hmm. The lifeblood of New Zealand studs is developing female families. Uh, we've been lucky, 1955, from the famed Trelawney stud, uh, buying a Foxbridge filly, which happened to be Fox owner. Uh, and then with the Bell family, uh, the soliloquy family, that's you know the Moore family based here in Caraca. When I start to think of, oh, I knew that mere three generations, you know, the grandmother, I'm thinking I'm getting a bit old, but uh, it, it is, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and you're always trying to upgrade or maintain them to the best that you can. So it's, it's very rewarding when you do see a, you know, uh, Melody Bell come out and perform, you know, her sale price was nothing great, but her race she performance is has made up for it. And I mean, it just continues on too. Hi, hi Gorgeous yeah. from that beautiful mare, Calvine, the family of Cozy Bay English Wonder. Floria won the Brisbane Cup and also, um, you know, full of spirit, the half to Bonneval and, you know, all those amazing horses through that family too. I mean, it, it, it is one of the best broodmare bands you'd see. Uh, we made a conscious decision seven or eight years ago to, to buy um, into some of these quality families um, through the yearling sale ring, a couple of fillies on the track at the time, and hence we've been able to develop the, the Moore family within Haonui. Um, we've been able to, the Westbury family, the, the, you know, the, we're full of spirit and the Bonneville factor comes from, and, and so it's, it's put us in good stead going forward. The gap's there now for Bellardo. Bellardo. Now he's returned and he's just a fantastic looking son of Lope de Vega. And that sire line is just on fire around the world. Yeah, it is. It's, um, you know, when we bought Elusive City, we bought a son of Elusive Quality. We've always, you know, looked to be a little bit on the edge and, and, and identifying sire lines. And that's the sire line that Ron identified. We know, you know, Sharmada was close to 10% stakes winners to foals in Australia of, you know, 300 odd foals. Lope de Vega are only four seasons in, in Australia and you know the Santa Ana Lanes, the Vega Magics. We've seen it here at home with Endless Drama winning the Easter and Spanish Whisperer, Matter Matter Breeders. It's a quality sire line um, and Bellardo himself was a dual Group 1 winner, uh, Group 1 performer at 2, 3 and 4. Uh, he won the Dewhurst which is a time honoured two year old race which crowned him champion two year old. Uh, going on to you know win the Lockinge before Royal Ascot and then running second. And, he was a proper Group 1 horse, you know, uh, Teppin, uh, nine-time Group 1 winning American Mare and Solo, five times, you know, he ran second to both those horses, so it wasn't a one-off performance, so, you know, we, we have a lot of high hopes for him. A 126 time form rating is a serious, serious race horse. Uh, he's out of a Dane Hill Mare, which I think augurs well for the New Zealand broodmare population. Um, and when we did a bit of analysis with him, you know, we could sort of close our eyes and breathe to him. So, you know, didn't have to think too much about it. And sometimes that's quite a nice thing. You know, you can test the genetics a little bit, and which is what we've done. And we've been well supported by a lot of New Zealand entities, uh, which is what we've had through the Ifrages and the showcasings. And so he's going to get his he's going to get his chance. We're hearing some great things about the foals already in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, he he's not 16 hands, he's 15-3. There's a lot, you know, there's been a bit written about, you know, yeah. horses being really big and, you know, big horses uh, take time. 
Um, you know, we're hopeful that he might give us an autumn two-year-old because his father, his grandfather was a two-year-old and Lope de Vega's been able to get two-year-olds. Um, and, you know, that Dane Hill influence on his bottom line, you know, will suit, you know, has suited a lot of New Zealand mares and we're delighted with the, the foals that we have on the ground. And Ifraj, I mean, he's such an old favourite, isn't he? He's just such a beautiful horse. We know about, you know, the deeds of Ginger Nuts and um, John Snow and, and obviously Fix as well, who was just a super filly by Ifraj. But he's just so masculine. Looks like he's been in a good paddock too while he's been overseas. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> he served just over 100 mares uh, in, this, in the 2019 breeding season. But it's a great game played slowly with Ifraj. You know, we all know the sort of the history and, you know, he's the broomy sire of obviously Melody Bell. If I said he was going to be a sire of size, you know, three or four years ago, people were saying, you're mad. Um, but, it, you know, you've got the, like Al Mansour, a grandson, uh, you've got Ribchester, you've got Turn Me Loose, you've got these Jungle Cat, you've got all these horses going to stud. He's actually had quite a significant influence in, in our part of the world. You know, if they show you promise, uh, waiting a little bit before you push the button um, is to advantage. Um, and as I say, they, they run on all sorts of going and, and they train on and, and uh, you know, he's a proven international group one side. I think the stallion game is getting harder for family orientated farms such as ourselves. Uh, and you've got to find the horse that you really want. Like, there's lots of stallions you could take on, um, but it's more than just about the first season. You know, you've really got to want to uh, make it work. Uh, we've got great clients that support us um, and you know, I would ideally have liked to have got another stallion this year, but we just didn't find the horse that suited us. Um, so Bellardo will get a really good opportunity in his third year. And, you know, with our broodmare band, we've, we're very mindful of giving the mares. We don't want to fail the mares. You know, lots of stallions don't make it. And uh, we don't want those mares to ha have been the guinea pigs for those stallions, you know, through and through. So, it's so important. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very important that you give the mares the chance and give them proven stallions and then use your stallions, you know, where, where you think that they, they suit. Um, so what's going forward? Hopefully just more, um, you know, good racetrack performance. That's important for us.